For decades, there have been crusades made against certain books by banning them. The reasons? Everything from trashy words to the use of depressing themes. This week is Banned Book Week, which is devoted to celebrating the books that have, at one point in their history, been removed from library and classroom shelves. We're being joined by Beth Berg, a collections librarian with Siouxland Libraries. She's here to share a few of the most commonly banned books and explain why a few of the classics are still fighting to stop the book bans. Welcome. Hi. So let's talk about what it really means to be a banned book like. Banned from everything, banned and burned, or are we just talking in some cases like not taught in schools? Um, well, yeah, when, when you're talking about a book challenge or a book ban, um, there's a lot of differences. A book may be challenged, which means um, people have concerns about it. Often parents have concerns about it, and uh, teachers and librarians, booksellers will um, take a look at the book and, and reevaluate whether it belongs on the shelf. A ban, on the other hand, means that the book is taken out of the library where it was banned, the bookstore where it was banned, or potentially the curriculum where it was banned or challenged, excuse me. Should we be banning books? I mean, does this, does this present any problems to have a book not available? The problem is that, yeah, you, you remove access or easy access to the book um, and, and ultimately the themes and the characters that are found therein. So it might maybe be better to say challenge a book if I feel strongly about it to be not taught in school perhaps. Mm -hmm. That might be something that is an option, right? As opposed to just a full out ban, there might be a place for that book to still be accessed. Yeah, um, you know, uh, definitely bring up concerns, you know. Um, we never really want to ban a book because that, again, it removes access. It, it um, removes access to, to kids or people that may benefit from the ideas that are in the book. Um, but if, if there is a book that's problematic or you have um, concerns about the book, talk to the teacher, um, talk to the librarian, and the book can be reevaluated. So let's talk about The Bluest Eye. Yeah, The Bluest Eye by, by Toni Morrison. This one um, is, it, it has shown up a, on banned book lists for, for decades. It's actually, um, I believe it's number 10 on the top 100 uh, most banned books of this last decade. And I think it is um, number nine on uh, the top 10 books of just this past year. So, um, and in fact, Toni Morrison is one of the most banned authors. Right. <laughs> Beloved shows up a lot too. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, so The Bluest Eye, um, it kind of runs the gamut of challenges. Um, most challenges fall into three categories. So um, it's either sexual content, um, profanity or offensive words, or ju just that it's not age appropriate for the audience. And so for the bluest eye, um, a lot of the challenges were about the sexual content in the book, but also the profanity. And then that makes it inappropriate to, to teach in schools to, to kids and teens. You know, the author herself says she wrote it because she wanted to sort of bring forward this idea that dark skin is bad and that, you know, what actual marginalized um, communities sometimes can feel growing up, particularly black girls, right? And yeah. so there's a real purpose for that. And a lot of educators have, have argued that it, reading it in classroom, even with some sexual content, has enabled students to feel things that they need to feel and move forward and, and you know, grow and heal. Yeah, and, and that's the power of teaching books that have problematic themes. Um, you know, they allow some students to be seen, but then they also are a window for other students to understand um, their, their colleagues, their, their peers better. Let's talk yeah. of, of mice and men. Um, of Mice and Men, yes. Um, so that is also on this last uh, top 10 um, most banned books. Uh, it, I think it's actually coming in at number eight. Um, uh, it's number 28 on the top 100 of the last decade. And so this one, um, you know, it, it has profanity in it. People are concerned about the profanity. Um, they're also concerned about racial stereotypes that are in the book. Um, and I think, you know, just a lot of the concerns kind of revolve around that. Really, though, an effort by the author to help people understand that when you really understand a person yeah. and get to know them, that those differences go away, right? Mm -hmm. To Kill a Mockingbird. This one gets me. To Kill a Mockingbird is probably the <laughs> one on here that I'm like, yep. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> to Kill Mockingbird, you know, I think that this shows up on almost every banned books list um, just because the themes are uh, 
are tough and um, you know kind of as 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 the years progress, you can see different um, different reasons that this book becomes problematic. Um, before, it was because of the the sexual content of the book, mm -hmm. the explicit um, explicitness of it, uh, the vulgar language, trashy language, and immoral themes. You know, those are those are um, reasons. Previous reasons. This year, it was number seven on the list um, because of the weight saviorism right. trope that's, yes, that's included in the book. Right. So. I think for a long time, it was lauded as this book that really um, fought racism, right? It had mm -hmm. all these abilities to get you to understand yeah. these racist undertones, but in reality, it's just another book that's a white saviorism story. Right. Exactly. You know, and um, just... But an opportunity to teach that. Opportunity to teach it, um, you know, and as we as we learn more about books and as we look at them more critically, you know, we may come to find that hey, this book doesn't need to be taught, um, but that doesn't mean that we completely remove access to it. And it, in fact, could be a great teaching tool as mm -hmm. to the issue with the white saviorism, right? By reading that out. So yep. the next book is interesting because it was a Kellerian Living Book Club book and also yeah. won Sioux Falls like the library book. So yeah. extremely loud and incredibly close. So we're almost out of time, but yeah, that's a banned book somewhere. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think in 2015 it was banned in Illinois because of uh, again uh, sexually explicit material. So you know, really, um, any book that that could be potentially problematic has probably at some point been at least challenged, if not banned, in a in a school or a library. And if you haven't read that, that was a story, um, a fictional story of 9/11 that we did read. So I recommend it. It wasn't my favorite out of the 9/11 books we read, yeah. but I wouldn't have read it thinking of it being a banned book so it's interesting how that can come up so yeah hey, thank you so much happy absolutely. band book week yes <laughs> i'm going to read a few of the band books to celebrate absolutely everyone should